Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining me to review the papers is Dr. Law Mefor, as a social and forensic scientist. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining. Okay, so we're going to go straight into the papers, and this morning we'll be starting with the business NG. Now, um, it's not the major headline, but it's a headline that I'm sure you might relate with because you're living in Nigeria and we know what food prices can be. Um, you are in Abuja, but we're in Lagos, and it's great to say that Lagos has unveiled the 25% dis percent discounted food markets. So on the business NG, it takes its art. Lagos government unveils 25% discounted food markets. On Nature News, um, it takes it as someone will look kicks off 57 Onje Eco food markets. And then on the punch is also there. Um, but then this time around, it says consumers lament POS machine shortage at Lagos discounted food markets. Um, so my first question is, what do you think about this initiative? Do you think it's um, great? Of course, it's, it, it's, it's nice to know that the government is thinking for the citizens, but is it even enough? Because you, you know that the prices of goods and services, especially food, and food is one of the basic necessities for leaving. Food is very expensive in Nigeria at the moment. Do you think this 25% off or discounted uh, markets that has been unveiled by the Lagos state government would even have an impact for everyone and everyone can benefit from it? Yeah, well, first, uh, I must uh, commend the government for taking a such a proactive uh, measure. Mm. Um, come uh, in the gap, uh, you know, intervening of the half of uh, Nigerian uh, suffering uh, masses living in Lagos is something um, to be commended for, to be honest. Yeah. Um, whether or not it will be able to uh, deal with uh, the food uh, crisis we are facing at the moment is a different uh, matter altogether. I think uh, uh, Governor Sanwolu is uh, proactive, and uh, how I wish all the other governors around the country are taking uh, similar measures, including the FCT minister. And um, yes, uh, th there are problems of um, our very nature. We are running a capitalist uh, economy, and um, when you are discounting um, for goods uh, as, and services uh, at one point, the capitalists who are selling uh, the same items, will be going to buy off from uh, such markets and um, taking to where they sell at uh, their normal exorbitant uh, prices. In capitalism, there is no morality. That is where the danger is. So the real solution will be in supply. You just have to uh, have enough. Uh, discounting 25% um, in uh, one or two uh, markets, um, well, it may solve the problem to some extent, but it will certainly not uh, deal with the entire uh, problem. I believe that uh, what the government ought to do is um, to allow uh, food uh, imports in the interim, even for six months, flood uh, the markets uh, with uh, with the goods, and um, that will uh, force down the prices everywhere across the country. I, 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 but again, even uh, when government is doing that, they need to also uh, look out there for hoarders people who will still want to uh, buy and store and uh, sell tomorrow at, um, uh, at, the, at higher prices. You know, that, that's the problem you have in capitalism. And uh, yes, it promotes the production. But even in our own uh, experience, you can see that the kind of capitalism we practice does not even uh, promote uh, production. Uh, you know, manufacturing uh, firms are folding up and leaving the country. There was uh, a, a staggering and um, uh, very embarrassing statistics a, a few uh, weeks ago pointing out that uh, as many as uh, 767 uh, um, uh, firms uh, closed their shops. They, they, left, they, they closed, they, they just simply closed shops in Nigeria. And uh, most of them are manufacturing uh, companies. So um, you discover that uh, while uh, what uh, Sawulu has done is uh, commendable, it's um, more or less a palliative. Mm. It, it, it doesn't uh, really deal with uh, the issue. Um, for me, in uh, 
the long run, what we must tackle is uh, uh, flooding the markets uh, across the country with foods. And the only way you can do that is to import. Yes, I understand the, the government the sentiment that they do not want to encourage the food the importation in the country. But we are faced with crisis. When you are faced with a crisis, you don't have many options. There are uh, very um, unpalatable measures you will have to take that may hurt your uh, policies in the interim. But um, you need those measures. And uh, food import is, is one. It may not be all food, but we can uh, pick on a few uh, staple uh, foods like um, rice, uh, beans, uh, uh, you know, and, and such, uh, and uh, let them come in. Then, of course, uh, the flaws, which you know is the base for the manufacturing of so many things, including bread, that has gone up to as high as 1,500 naira in many places now. It, it, we just have to deal with that because uh, the masses are dying, the, the, their income is not growing, and uh, their capacity to purchase is uh, withering. And, um, you have more. You have also have. You also have what you call a money illusion. You uh, appear to have more money, but uh, you don't have the goods to purchase uh, with. Even a few uh, months ago, the price of uh, bread was five hundred naira, and now it is one thousand five. It means that the the, the cost uh, for purchasing bread has tripled. That in itself is a big problem. So, and your income is not uh, is not a uh, growing in such a geometric uh, proportion. So if it's not growing and uh, the inflation is wiping off the little you have, then you have real crisis. So um, again, of course, uh, uh, they, they need to target, like I said, targeted imports. It doesn't have to uh, mean uh, opening the nation's uh, borders and asking uh, people to import whatever they can and whatever they want. No, we need to pick on specific things that will address the food crisis in the country. And of course, uh, they really do something about facing, facing a, a return to production in the country. We are no longer producing. I talked about 767 uh, uh, companies that have folded. They have folded their shops, left the country or within the country, but no longer producing. The question is why? It is the cost of doing business. The, the electricity is not there. Nigeria, as big as we are, we are uh, uh, condemned to uh, 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 sharing uh, about 3,000 uh, megahertz. But in South Africa, that is um, uh, about, it's not even up to one quarter of uh, Nigeria population. Uh, South Africa is about uh, four, 40 million people. But they generate up to 5,000, uh, 50,000 uh, megahertz of electricity. You can imagine that. Ghana, Ghana is about 30 million people. And then, they, they generate over 5,000 uh, megahertz of electricity. Ghana here, you know. So you can see that until you deal with the issue of power, you can't really deal with uh, the issue of production. Yeah. And again, particularly because you talked about food crisis, yeah. don't forget about the reason why the farmers are no longer going to farms. You know, it's because of insecurity. The killer headsmen have taken over over our forests, and uh, the, the, the farmers can no longer go to go, go to farms. In many places, they have to pay terrorists, bandits, to access their farms. When they till the soil and plant, they pay them again to be able to harvest. You know, that is going on in the country. It is no longer a, a secret. It's not speculation. It's all over the place that they, the bandits, the killer headsmen, the terrorists, have driven the, the, work, the, the farmers out of the farms. So you deal with these two issues. You deal with electricity. You deal with insecurity. And Nigeria, Nigeria's a problem will be more than, a, more, more than a, solved by more than half of uh, the way. Because uh, the, these are the two issues that have kept the country backward, creating the crisis we are facing. You can't find food in the markets because the farmers are not producing anymore. That's the truth. And the, the government is saying, we don't want to import. You know, what kind <clears> of politics <throat> Okay, let me, let me butt in here a little bit. 
Let me butt in here a little yeah. bit. There is another um, headline that talks about Kogi Rivers and Quara record highest food prices in Nigeria. And that's the MBS report. So we're seeing this all over Nigeria. There's obviously, we cannot deny that there's a food crisis. But looking at your recommendation, talking about importing, is that not going to even weaken the Naira a little bit more? Because at the end of the day, if we have to import, we would have to use probably a, the dollar or exchange our Naira for whatever currency we need to buy from. I understand you're saying some staple um, foods and all of that, but I'm just thinking about the economic effect on this. So wouldn't that, you know, weaken the Naira as it could be? And, and what we're trying to do is make sure that we're growing more produce and even exporting to other countries so that we're growing the Naira. So what will happen in a situation like that? That is why I said in the interim, you do that in the interim. It doesn't have to be a long-term uh, solution. Mm. You can uh, create a, a six a month a window to enable a food coming to the country because you don't have. You know, within that window, you are declaring full uh, emergency in the area of insecurity to enable you clear the forest and the farms so that the, the farmers can go back. No matter what you plant, you need at least three months. Mm. Even for ordinary maize, you need like three months to be able to harvest. In that, in, in, in that, within that three months, how, how, how do you survive? That is the question here. I, you know, sometimes uh, when uh, my wife uh, returns uh, uh, from market and gives an uh, account of what she has done, you know, almost breaking down in tears and stuff. You know, I wonder how the, the, the truly poor Nigerians survive. You understand that? Yeah. You know, I, any income my wife does, and we find it so tough. So what happens to families that don't earn nothing? And they are in majority. So you need to think about those people. That's why I said, bring in rice, bring in maize, bring in beans, bring in flaws to enable them uh, uh, the people that produce a, a spaghetti and so on and so forth to still be in market. You can't even find the spaghetti anywhere anymore. <laughs> the one you find, you surprised that the spaghetti you bought 75 naira uh, a few months ago is now going for 500, 700 naira. Mm. You know, think about the students. They survive on, on, on Indomie. That's what they survive on. Indomie and bread. <laughs> so you can't find those anymore. So how do they survive? That's my concern. So even if the naira to dollar will take a beating, you know, a bit, if you regulate the process and decide uh, how to deploy the little uh, dollar you have, it, it, it's, it's worth it, I tell you. It's really worth it. You know, and um, part of the problem we have in uh, the dollar to naira crisis is uh, simply because uh, the, the uh, economic uh, policies of government as far as um, Naira flotation is concerned, are very wrong. You cannot float your currency. You don't do that. I'm not aware of any country in the world that floats, leaves uh, its uh, currency to the vagaries of the uh, market uh, forces, demand and supply and all that. Who does that? Mm -hmm. So that is the policy being run by the Tinubu administration. I'm not an economist, but you don't really need to be an economist to understand that if you are not exporting much, you can't float. Because if you, if Naira will have to uh, stand on a base. The base the Naira should stand on, they are, they are two, not uh, perhaps three. One is uh, your external reserve. What is that? What do you have as your external reserve? Five, five billion dollars. What is that? A country like, Ni a country like China has an external reserve of about one trillion dollars. Hmm. And you are leaving your Naira to go and fight with the Chinese Europe. How? You know, I don't, I don't get some of these uh, crazy policies. Because if, uh, you know, if you say you want to leave your, your, your currency to, to um, vagaries or market forces, what you are indirectly saying, in fact, directly saying, is that you want the Naira to find its level with the pound, with the euro, with the yuan, with all of them. And it has nothing. You, you have no export base. You're not exporting anything beyond the crude oil. When I, I, I was looking at uh, the figures uh, from Bureau, uh, Bureau, um, uh, National Bureau of Statistics, and I was shocked to find that 
the, the Nigeria's export is still up to 75% crude oil. Mm. It means that the balance of 25% is all you can all, all you can export. And then the, the, and what is that? Even a, if, 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 if the, the agro-based export is wiped out completely, so you, you you have no reason whatsoever to subject your 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 naira to the values of the market forces. So that is what this government has done. Mm. And so you discover that uh, it, 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 the, we are in this because the policies theoretically on, on paper they appear good, but the implementation, the realities are not there. You can't float when you're not exporting. That's what I'm saying, because it is when you are exporting that you're any more uh, foreign currencies, more dollar, because uh, the international uh, market is more or less denominated in a dollar. You, you, you are not exporting, so you are not any more dollars beyond what you earn from the, from the crude oil. And the market is so volatile. So why in the whole world, why do we allow Naira flotation? Government must defend the Naira at all costs. That's the point I'm making. You don't float the Naira. You have to defend Naira. And um, I also believe that uh, the foreign exchange market will have to be regulated seriously so that we know uh, who is uh, utilizing what. And um, nobody is, uh, is regulating that as such. You know, the dollar you are looking for is uh, used as store of value by by the big uh, by the big people. You know, so you find the dollar in their houses instead of in the banks. That is the truth. You know, one of the when we were doing economics in a secondary school decades ago, one of the things we learned about money is that money it has number one function, which is store of value apart from being a medium of exchange. Naira has lost that, uh, that uh, right, that power, to serve as store of value. So Nigerians, rather than uh, keep the Naira, use the Naira to move up, uh, to move up uh, foreign currencies, mm. dollar, pound, all that, and keep in their houses. <laughs> okay. that's, that, 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 that's what has brought us to where we are. Yeah. So if government can go move in that direction, Try to use more persuasion, use the law, use the blackmail, whatever government can do to compare people to bring out the dollar and leave it, leave it in the banks. It will be it will be better for us. Then you come with a regulation that the banks shouldn't keep um, a, a foreign currencies in excess of a specific amount. The rest of it will have to be domiciled in the in the, in the central bank. Mm. That way, government has firm 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 uh, control over the little we have and then allocate it judiciously to the imports that really mean something. All right, speaking then, about you know, using things judiciously, um, the PDP has urged the President uh, Bola Tinubu to review 2024 budget, and this is still on the business NG. There's a small, small headline at the top that says PDP urges President Tinubu to review 2024 budget. Now, if you know about this story, the initial budget was 25 million um, trillion naira, according to Senator Ningi, and then we get to see it being moved up to 28.7 trillion naira. And so there's an allegation of budget padding. However, the PDP has urged President Tudubu now to review the budget. What do you think about the whole saga? And you know, are we even spending our monies judiciously? Because I'm using your words right now. You know, uh, what Ningi um, did um, is a classic example of uh, saying the right thing the wrong way. Mm. Tenobu, uh, uh, Tenobu's uh, budget that came to National Assembly was uh, 2.7, not uh, 2.5. 2.7, uh, 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 something, 2. something uh, trillion, and uh, the National Assembly passed uh, 2.8 um, trillion. What that means, you have um, an increase uh, cost by National Assembly to the tune of uh, one point something trillion. Certainly not a not a three point uh, seven trillion. Statistically, Nigi is off the mark completely. There is no way he can prove that uh, that the two point twenty-eight point something trillion um, will now uh, produce the difference of uh, 3.7 trillion when uh, you subtract a uh, 27.7 trillion statistically 
But what him, what he was saying was generally right. We 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 don't have um, uh, any uh, serious uh, budgeting system in Nigeria. And um, what uh, members of the National Assembly do, which uh, Ningi himself is part of, is um, they go to the MDAs, ministries, departments, and agencies, and get them to uh, put certain uh, projects into the, into the budget for them, even before the budget is brought to National Assembly. So if, if uh, Ningi had uh, taken this route now, you know, he would have made better sense. So the, what I'm saying is the budget party didn't even happen in National Assembly. Mm. Where it happened was in uh, the MDAs before they brought the budget to National Assembly. And when they did, the National Assembly still added something to it. You know, whether or not the National Assembly has the right to um, uh, uh, increase, reduce the budget, it has been a, a subject... A, a, well, there's an allegation. There's an allegation that um, some senators went home with about 500 million naira each. So, could that even now, account for the budget padding? Now, 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 now let, let me let me um, strengthen. Uh, I'm not a spokesman of uh, the National Assembly, but right. uh, I was in the Senate for about 10 years, so I know what goes on there. You know, so when they say a senator went home uh, with 500 million. The impression being created is that uh, it's cash that is given to the senator. No, it's not. It goes back to the same issue of um, the same issue of uh, uh, what you call constituency projects. All the members of national assembly get a, they have an envelope of uh, the projects they have to nominate, you know, for their constituencies to be added in the budget. That is what they are saying, that the senators went, went uh, home with uh, 500 million. No, they didn't go home with 500 million naira cash. You know, if they did, I'm not aware of that, and I don't think that that is the issue. It is the envelope each senator gets to nominate projects that will be inserted in the budget for his or her constituencies. It didn't start with that, Babio. He's been there right from the days of Obasanjo. Obasanjo fought it, he failed. And um, Yaradua fought it, he failed. Uh, the, um, Google of Jonathan did, he failed. Buhari didn't even try. And, um, and Tinubu is continuing with the policy. The policy of uh, the National Assembly members nominating budget, uh, projects into the budget. That is that envelope, that 500 million you get. You know, and uh, I, I think what caused the crisis is that it's not every senator that got the opportunity, hmm. you know, that got the opportunity to nominate such projects. If you remember when uh, on, uh, the Senator uh, uh, Bami Dela Obayemi was uh, speaking on the matter, he alluded to it. And um, there are senators who got more. There are senators who got less. All this is ought to have been decided before you even implement uh, the policy in the first place. What that means is that uh, the Abio leadership of the Senate did not follow the, the laid the, 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 the tradition of uh, allowing uh, the senators to nominate. To nominate, you know, the, the, the process that I am aware of when I was there is it's a flat rate. Every senator gets that envelope. Mm. The, of course, uh, the principal officers, the, the Senate president, the deputy the other principal officers of the Senate, they get more. They get a lot more. Okay. You know, where, where a senator gets, uh, gets uh, 500 million budget uh, allocation, they, uh, the, 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 the Senate president may get uh, up to 2 billion. You know, so this is the kind of thing to find. So, but uh, it seems that uh, uh, Abadio now decided to allow some senators to take more and what others did is that this uh, caused uh, the crisis. You know, it's needless, as far as I am concerned. And because the National Assembly does not have uh, any uh, serious uh, media arm, you know, they, they have remained the whipping boys since uh, 1999.
As we speak now, I don't even know who is the director of information of uh, the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. He don't know who is the chief press secretary of uh, the Senate president, the chief press secretary of uh, the speaker. These are the people that should be all over the place explaining to Nigerians what uh, the whole uh, issue is about. And so, at the end of the day, they allow the Ningi to sell a dummy, and um, what the Ningi has uh, put out there is complete fallacy. Not possible. Not. So, if you understand what has happened from this perspective, you will see why the Senate is angry with the uh, with the uh, uh, Ningi because uh, he also got a. Uh, the opportunity to nominate a, to nominate a, a project into the budget. And he did not reject it. If he rejected it, he should have told Nigeria he didn't. That means he was part of what he was uh, talking about. Did he not nominate mm -hmm. a project? He did. He never said he did not nominate projects. So if he okay, nominated let's, a project... Let's, let's move over to some security matters. So on the punch, the major headline here says, Soldiers Killing. Tinubu Senate other manhunt for killers. Troops comb warring communities. And the writers here says president condemns attack, says DHQ has full authority to bring anybody responsible to justice. And Senate retired generals others fume demand tough actions against killers condole with military. So I'm sure you've heard of um, what happened in Delta State. About 16 soldiers were killed. Some of them, their bodies, about two of them, their bodies were floating in the water. Others, they were found on land. Their stomachs were out. They were beheaded. And they said, well, some people decided to just go on a, on a spree and kill these soldiers. Now, in retaliation, allegedly, some people have said that these soldiers have gone back to this community and they've raised it down, you know, out of anger. Um, but what do you think about all of this? Because initially, I would have expected that because you are in the military, you even have some form of security for yourself. But now you're seeing civilians, you know, take matters into their own hands. I don't even care what would have transpired because there's no reason for you to take a person's life. So I don't know what would have happened for these people to decide to kill these soldiers. So now you're seeing even soldiers, even the military personnel are being killed. What does that tell us about our security system in Nigeria? I want to get your thoughts on this. You know, um, I was uh, joking with a friend the other day that uh, days are coming when Nigerians will have to defend the police. Hmm. You know, uh, we may now have to be the ones to uh, defend the, the Nigerian police force. And um, uh, not the other way around. The police is supposed to be defending uh, uh, all of us. But you can see that uh, the nation's uh, security architecture has changed, especially because the Nigerian police force is not uh, functioning. That is why I started with the police. You know, you have a warring, you have a warring uh, uh, community or communities. You know, is you know uh, an evidence of a failed uh, uh, intelligence gathering, failed uh, uh, policing system. Obviously, so because for a community to um, go on uh, such a uh, rampage. To the point of uh, confronting the the, the 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 army, the soldiers that came for peacekeeping. Obviously, not they prepared for war. Otherwise, they would have been taken out in bad manner. You know, uh, but but, but they, they were they they they, they um, their uh, uh, peace overture was um, uh, returned with uh, such a level of heinous uh, wickedness. You remember something like this happened on the other side mm. of you know, the community, they, they, you know, about three soldiers were killed by their youth. And the, the army gave automatic to ask them to produce the youth that carried out the act or, or pay for it. They thought it was a joke. The next, the, 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 the army stormed the OG, and um, over 2,000 people were killed. And uh, the community literally raised to the ground. This is the kind of thing that provokes that kind of a response for the military. Because, you know, it's an affront. It's an affront. Mm -hmm. And uh, whoever knows uh, the leaders of uh, those communities should tell them to produce the people that were responsible. They should know their armed, uh, armed uh, groups. They should know them. They should name them 
and they release them to, to, the, to the military. They should do so. Otherwise, whatever they see, they take. That is it. Mm -hmm. For me, whatever the military does there, there will not uh, will be part of those uh, analyzing uh, about human rights, about massacres and, and all those things. You killed, you, 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 do you see the level of soldiers killed? Do you know what it takes to train and produce a colonel, a major, a yeah. captain, and all the soldiers they killed just like that? They are, they are not only soldiers, they are also, they are also citizens of Nigeria. They are fathers. Yeah. They are, fa they are fathers. They are husbands. Right. You know, the earlier the better. They must produce the leaders of their armed groups. Anybody that is at war with another community, an armed group that is waging the war on their behalf, they should know those who are leading the armed groups in those communities and name them and release their names to the military. And the earlier they do this, the better for them. Right. And I will advise the military, you know, to continue to show maturity constraints, you know, restraints and all that. But again, I would, I would also want to advise the military to allow itself to be rubbish to of the point not. that uh, the civilians will be running a uh, rough shoots on them. Yeah. Look, when we were going up, seeing a soldier, you know, even the cyclist soldier, you know, what they, they, you know who a soldier is? Mm -hmm. You understand that? He, a soldier, when we were growing up, you know, it, it was rare, very rare to see a soldier. And when you see one, you, you, you see a symbol of Nigerian sovereignty. Yeah, it's, and a soldier is respected. No, yeah. yes, they, 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 they are... They are awesome. They are uh, they, they are people when they whenever they appear. Mm. You understand that, and it is very rare. You don't just see them. Whenever you see them, you know there is problem, there is crisis, and they will deal with it. Right. Today, Nigerian soldiers are in thirty-three states, keeping internal uh, uh, security operations where the where the where the police are in thirty-three out of thirty-six states. You know, so it has made them ubiquitous. He has commonized them. He has made them, you know, appear even as ordinary as uh, the, uh, the the constables that carry only back it around. So you see a soldier, it means nothing to you anymore. Well, right. we hope that justice is served for, for the soldiers that have been killed. And obviously, we don't want their, um, the military to be rubbish, like you've said. So we hope that this doesn't even happen again because it's quite unfortunate. And our hearts goes out to the families of these people because, of course, their fathers, their husbands, and they were their friends, their brothers, you know, they will be missed. Yes. yes. So anyways, I want to take this final one quickly because we're a little bit out of time. And this is on The Guardian. It says, cutting governance costs beyond Orosai report. I want to get your recommendations. If we were supposed to, you know, just cut out some certain costs because we're seeing our budget of... 28.7 um, trillion naira at the moment. So if we're supposed to cut out some little, little things, you know, just to save up money for Nigeria, especially with what our economy is like at the moment, um, well, what would be your recommendations on how we can just start to chip, you know, just do some little chip chop off the budget? Well, you see, I am not one of those who are persuaded that uh, Tenobu is uh, serious about um, cutting down uh, the of governance. Mm. Uh, don't so. The Office of uh, the Accountant General is holding a, 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 a workshop in London, as we speak. And uh, it uh, attendee, going there, we go with Esther Coach, stay in a hotel, eat their meals, and all that. There is no justification for it. Nothing justifies it. Even if you want uh, some foreign experts to um, come teach whatever, you can fly them into the country. But they didn't do that. They instead decided to move uh, the workshop to, to UK. You know, it's, it, I just mentioned one instance for you to understand that uh, this government is not into any, any cut, uh, uh, cost, uh, uh, cutting uh, measures. They look, at the, look at the size of a uh, uh, Tenobu uh, cabinet. Is the, is, the, is the biggest in uh, Nigerian history. 
you know, is the biggest. It's not the, it's not an approach. It's not an attitude of somebody who really wants to cut down on body. It's not cutting down on cost. It's not at all. If he wants to cut down on cost, he has to look at his at his uh, the cabinet and then uh, and bring it down by at least half. It is true that uh, the constitution says that uh, every every uh, state will have to nominate uh, somebody to the cabinet. But don't go beyond what the constitution has prescribed. If you know that uh, reducing uh, the number of uh, ministers um, below um, 36 would be an affront on the constitution, I wouldn't encourage the president to recommend that um, uh, Ariel Toto um, violate the constitution. But even at that, he should show commitment by proposing an amendment to the National Assembly to do something about that clause. That said, Oronso hmm. report is very important. All right. It's one way they didn't cost. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank but you so much. Just, yeah, just, just one last sentence. Okay. Oronso's report should be implemented without job loss. Mm. They shouldn't lead to living But is that even possible? Because if you're going to merge two agencies, of course, that's like a dupli duplication of roles. So is that even possible? No, 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 no. The 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 report never prescribed cases that should be merged. Mm. When you merge them, what means is that. The bigger agency remains. The smaller ones, their DG becomes a director mm. under the under the superstructure. That is what it should be. Okay, and sir. And when the DG becomes, you know, so it's, it will affect only the directors and DGs. All right. Mm. We're having a little glitch on your network, but yes, we just want to say thank you for coming. It was lovely reviewing the papers with you. Thank you so much. All right, we've been speaking with Dr. Law Mefor. He is a social and forensic scientist, and we've just been taking stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our hot topic. We talk about the saga in the Senate at the moment, from Ningin's suspension to Serap, you know, calling Akpabio to reinstate him. Let's just go on a short break. See you soon. <laughs>